Ok, bueno, pues eh, les presento a la ingeniera y maestra en ciencias de la computación, Sri Priyanka, que actualmente está trabajando para Verizon Digital Medios, Media Services. Así que nos trae una presentación que se llama CDN eh, como un telescopio, así que espero que lo, lo disfruten. Muchas gracias. Hello everyone. Hola. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to come and present here. Thank you, LACNIC. I'm Sri Priyanka Oppo, and I work as a performance engineer at Verizon Digital Media Services. And along with my colleague, Marcel Flores, who's a research scientist at VDMS as well, and he couldn't make it to the conference, so I'll be talking about a CDN as a telescope. Before we dive into the topic, let me take a quick moment to talk about VDMS HCAST CDN. As a commercial CDN, we provide caching infrastructure to a diverse set of content providers who in turn have a large and varied set of end users. In addition to the traditional website caching, we also do live video streaming, we do uh, deliver uh, software game updates, software updates, and a bunch of videos. We also provide security to the content. In in what this means is it gives us an interesting perspective to study the internet end users by performing passive measurements on them. As you can see, we are a global CDN. We are spread across six continents with over 130 plus POPs, and we serve a network capacity of 73 terabits per second. And we also have more than 4,500 interconnects. In today's talk, I would like to talk about CDN as a telescope, and as per our analysis, we serve about 10% of the internet traffic. And what this gives us is an interesting opportunity to study the end users from the telescopic view of a CDN. In today's talk, we'll be talking about three main things. The first one being understanding the trends in ISP behaviors. In under this topic, we will try to understand what are the number of requests coming from each client country, and in addition, we'll see the distribution of those requests across the ASNs. Secondly, we also try to understand the large-scale routing behavior. Typically, we figure out if the requests coming from the country of origin actually reach the country of destination, or what kind of complications exist in them. Last but not the least, we have some cool internet performance analysis which we perform on our end. And this is like trying to figure out the penalty that each country has to pay in terms of RTT if their request goes outside the country. So without further ado, let me walk you through the data set. As a CDN, we have a huge set of users spread across the entire world. They communicate with our POPs, and then uh, they try to uh, reach their requests. So we, as part of routine CDN operations, we do collect incoming TCP connections, and we sample them. And we also ensure that this sampling procedure is actually representative of the entire network data itself. So once we get the incoming TCP connections, we store them in our in-house Elasticsearch cluster. From this data, typically we get the client IP and then we aggregate them on slash 24 subnets. The reason we do it is purely for storage purposes. So we tag to this client IP data, we tag country of origin using the MaxMines database, and we also add in the ASNs using the route use table. And as you can see, we also know the uh, point of presence or pop where the request hits. All these fields, the client IP, country of origin, ASN, POP, are aggregated on number of requests. For the sake of today's analysis, we focus on the data set which we collect from the client, uh, client country, where the countries fall under the South America or Latin American countries. And this analysis has been done for a 24-hour time period in Jan 2019. Moving on. So let me talk about the first analysis. So we are trying to understand the trends in the ISP behavior. In this graph, as you can see, on the x-axis, we have a client country from where the request originates, and we have a list of uh, Latin American or South American countries. 
And on the y-axis, you have the total number of requests that has been normalized to the maximum. Unsurprisingly, Brazil tops the list, and this can be attributed to the fact that it is the largest Latin American country, and hence we see more number of requests coming from it. This can also be fueled by the fact that we just might have more customers coming in from Brazil. Moving on. Having counts alone does give us a good census information, but having uh, uh, trying to understand the size of individual ASNs can help us more. As you can see in this graph on the x-axis, we have the number of requests coming from each ASN in the countries listed above. So we have Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, and then we also have United States for comparison. On the y-axis, we have the cumulative distributive frequency of the number of requests coming from each ASN. A couple of things stand out in this graph. The first one being, on the lower end, as you can see, the smaller Brazilian networks serve more number of requests, whereas the United States in the blue line has way too many smaller networks. Interestingly, at about 80th percentile, we see that the Mexican and Colombian ASS have served more number of requests than any others. And lastly, on the extreme right uh, upper end corner, we see that there's a single largest Mexican AS that dominates the entire spread and serves way too many number of requests. So what we saw was, we saw that the size of the uh, ASNs vary greatly. And now moving on, let's take a look at the large scale routing behavior. Before I proceed, let me take a moment to talk about uh, the way we make announcements at HCAST CDN. We use Anycast to make our announcements. So what it means is, we have certain set of IP blocks that get announced from all pops across the world. And we rely upon the internet to make the decisions, which in turn relies upon BGP. But countries which have complex peering relationships often encounters way too many complications with any cast. So in this graph, this is a heat map of the number of, uh, of, the number of requests coming from each country of origin. On the x-axis, we have the client country, essentially where the request originates from, and on the y-axis, we, ha we have the destination country where the request lands. In addition to the list of Latin American countries, we also added United States in the list of destination countries. And this heat map is based on the fraction of requests coming from each country of origin. So few things stand up. The darker the shade of the color is, that means we see more fraction of requests coming from that particular country of origin. So we see that Mexico, Colombia, and Brazil serve most of the requests within the country, and that's really good. But as stated earlier, BGP in conjunction with Anycast, in conjunction with complex peering relationships, um, make the other Latin American countries reach the United States and hence the requests don't go where we actually want to go. So that was the complication in the routing behavior. Moving on to the last point of today's talk, which is internet performance analysis. So this is a graph where on the x-axis we have the list of countries, and on the y-axis we have the relative penalty, and this penalty is measured in terms of RTT. That is, how much RT, uh, penalty in RTT that each country has to pay if their traffic leaves the country. Sure enough, in previous slide, we saw that Brazil serves most of their requests within the country. But what happens if those requests actually go outside the country? As can be as shown in the graph uh, here, we see that Brazil pays a penalty of 2.5 times in terms of RTT if the requests leave the country. On the other hand, we see an increase in, in performance for Mexico. We see that the improve, uh, Mexico improves in performance by 50% in RTT. And this can be attributed to the fact that we have, uh, most of our POP deployments are along the US-Mexican border, and hence we see an improvement in the performance. In conclusion, uh, in today's talk, we saw how we can use a large-scale CDN as a passive observatory, to, uh, trying to understand, perform passive measurements on internet end users, and 
so, and try to understand the visibility into region-specific behavior by seeing the number of requests coming from each region and the distribution of those requests among the ISPs. Also, we saw the routing behavior and the complications encountered in this. And the pen last but not the least, we saw the penalty incurred in inter-country traffic through the graph. So what this gives us is an interesting uh, opportunity to perform planning. So this kind of analysis enables us to do infrastructure planning insight, both for CDN as well as for the large operator community as a whole. And we are working on making this data publicly available, so please stay tuned. Thank you. Un, un aplauso, bueno, ya se le hemos dado a nuestra presentadora y bueno, tenemos espacio para un par de preguntas. Si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, por acá eh, Douglas. Hola. Uh, in, in Brazil, we have a, a continental size country. So, uh, if you consider in Acre, that is on one, on one of our states, he is at, at least uh, 30 milliseconds from the major point to, to get out of Brazil. So th this kind of difference, Argentina, it's another example from that, of that, and uh, cons comparing it to Mexico, that it's right uh, uh, by side of Miami, uh, this could be taken in consideration. Uh, th th this big size dimensions, big dimensions of uh, each country were considered on your analysis? Uh, in the last graph? Yeah. Oh. Yes, uh, we did consider all those. Um, uh, we took a median of the distribution, so we also ensure that we uh, uh, remove the anomalies. Okay. If you have any other questions, we have a booth outside, so you can feel free to come and talk to us. Thank you. Muchísimas, muchísimas gracias, bueno, a Siri Priyanka, que nos ha traído este interesante tema. Ella también va a estar por acá esta semana. Y bueno,